from Comedy Central's World News Headquarters in New York, The Daily Show with Trevor Noah presents The Russian Scandal, The Creme de la Kremlin 3. Robert Mueller gave a list of questions to Trump's legal team, and those questions have now leaked to the media. And everyone knows, unless it's in a hotel room in Russia, President Trump does not like leaks. The president tweeting this. So disgraceful that the questions concerning the Russian witch hunt were leaked to the media. No questions on collusion. Oh, I see. You have a made-up phony crime, collusion that never existed, and an investigation begun with illegally leaked classified information. Nice. But you can tell from this tweet that the president is really mad. First off, because he says none of Mueller's questions are about collusion, which is not true, because 14 of the questions are about collusion. But I guess if you round down, 14 is basically zero. And second, <laughs> second, he's really mad because he believes that Mueller's team leaked these questions to the press. But what if it turns out the leak is coming from inside the house? It's very likely, or at least it would make a lot of sense, that the leak would come from Trump world. Because people like us on television would be saying that this is a really bad idea, oh. and perhaps he listens to television uh, more than he listens to his own advisors. <laughs> Being Trump's lawyer must be so exhausting. <laughs> no, just think about it. He won't listen to you, so you have to launder your legal advice through the TV. <laughs> And uh, guess which news did exactly what Trump's team needed? This garbage from the New York Times tonight, absolute garbage. No attorney will ever let this president sit down with Robert Mueller. See, half of these questions are dumb anyway. You don't, oh, what was in your mind at the time? You don't, you don't punish people or charge people for the thoughts they have in their head. You know, my favorite thing about Sean Hannity is He's the wrongest right-sounding person you'll ever meet. <laughs> because you realize you can get charged because of the thoughts you had in your head. It's called criminal intent. It's such a basic concept of law and order that they put it in the name of the show. A memo from President Trump's lawyers to special counsel Robert Mueller says flat out that a president cannot obstruct justice because he has authority over all federal investigations. What they argue in this memo is that the president of the United States, because he's a chief law enforcement officer, can terminate any federal investigation at any time for any reason. According to Donald Trump's legal team, the president, by definition, cannot obstruct justice. But even if it ever turned out that he did obstruct justice, they also say that the president can't be charged with a crime. Mr. Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, telling the Huffington Post it's impossible to indict a sitting president, no matter the offense, claiming if he shot James Comey, he'd be impeached the next day. Impeach him, and then you can do whatever you want to do to him. Okay, okay. So the president can't be criminally charged. He can only be impeached by Congress. Now, I, I understand that as a legal argument, but I do think it's a little weird that out of all the examples they could have picked, they went with murdering James Comey. <laughs> it almost makes me feel like they've been thinking about this. Before heading to the summit, President Trump sparked controversy by saying he wants Russia to be welcomed back into the G8. We have a world to run. And in the G7, which used to be the G8, they threw Russia out. They should let Russia come back in because we should have Russia at the negotiating table. I don't know if Trump colluded with Russia, but if everyone was accusing me of colluding with Russia, I wouldn't be caught dead mentioning their name. <laughs> like, if your girlfriend accused you of cheating with Keisha, even if you didn't do it, just shut up about Keisha. <laughs> Just shut up. Hey, babe, you know who we should invite to the party? Keisha. <laughs> Nigga, I know you didn't just bring up Keisha. I know you did not just bring up Keisha. But clearly, clearly Trump doesn't know how to take a clue because he kept bringing up Keisha all weekend long. Some people like the idea of bringing Russia back in. This used to be the G8, not the G7. And something happened a while ago where uh, 
Russia is no longer in. I think it would be an asset to have Russia back in. The something that happened that got them kicked out of the G8 was the invasion and annexation of Crimea. Do you think that Crimea should be recognized in Russia? Crimea was let go during the Obama administration. And, you know, Obama can say all he wants, but he allowed Russia to take Crimea. Oh, OK, OK, that makes sense. Russia annexing Crimea wasn't really a big deal. But we must never forgive Obama for letting them commit this atrocity, which was not a big deal at all. I mean, <laughs> who even knows what a Crimea is anyway? I mean, it's just a random little place whose blood is in Obama's hands! <laughs> anyway, I think we should invite Keisha. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> if, your name, if your name is Vladimir Putin, then today was a very good day, because today, the President of the United States took your side in a fight between you and the United States. Breaking news, siding with Putin. President Trump comes out of his meeting with the Russian president and rebukes U.S. intelligence agencies. I think that press conference was the single most embarrassing performance by an American president on the world stage that I've ever seen. Damn, the most embarrassing performance by an American president. Do you know how hard it is? to achieve that. George H.W. Bush once threw up on the Japanese prime minister. <laughs> and Trump is now on top. When they set up this meeting last month, no one knew what it was meant to be about, right? They never knew what the meeting was for. They didn't know if it was going to be about nuclear weapons. Was it going to be about the war in Syria, missile defenses in Europe? I mean, maybe it was just going to be Trump going in to see Putin for his annual performance review. No one knew what it was. <laughs> the meeting had no agenda, right? But then on Friday, Robert Mueller, dropped a bombshell directly charging 12 Russian military intelligence officers with hacking Democrats during the presidential campaign in an effort to sway the election, which was major news. So now, the formerly purposeless meeting between Trump and Putin had a meaning, right? It was time for Trump to put his foot down. And he did, right on America's dick. Just now, President Putin denied having anything to do with the election interference in 2016. Every U.S. intelligence agency has concluded that Russia did. Who do you believe? All I can do is ask the question. My people came to me, Dan Coates came to me and some others. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. Really? You don't see any reason not to trust Vladimir Putin? The man was a top KGB spy. He'll steal the shirt off your back. Hell, he stole the shirt off his own back. You can't trust this man. The president chose Russia in front of everyone. You cannot cut deals with the devil, and you can never trust Russia. One of the most disgraceful performances by an American president in memory. Now, look, President Trump is no stranger to criticism, right? But it's not often that even his closest allies slam his actions. Even Newt Gingrich, former Speaker of the House and swollen Mike Pence, tweeted <laughs> that this was the most serious mistake of Trump's presidency and that he must clarify what he meant. So, just like after Trump praised the Charlottesville Nazis, today, the president was forced to come out and pretend to believe something different than what he said. And I don't know if you guys believe in omens, but watch what happened. Let me begin by saying that, uh, once again, the full faith and support for America's intelligence agencies. I have a full faith in our intelligence agencies. Oops, they just turned off the light. That must be the intelligence agents. <laughs> there it goes. Okay. You guys okay? <laughs> that was strange. I like how he's checking if everyone else is okay, but if you look at his body language, he was like, I have full faith that when the lights come on, he's like, everyone else okay? <laughs> I'm cool. I'm cool. You guys okay? I'm cool. I wasn't scared at all. I'm cool. But that was insane. Trump tried to claim that he believes the intel agencies, and then the lights went off. It's like even electricity is tired of, tired of Trump's bullshit. It was just like, no. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if one day Trump just starts floating because gravity's like, enough of this, I'm out, I'm out. I can't deal with this guy. He said when it came to hacking, I don't know why it would be Russia, would be. Right. Then he flies back to America, and all of a sudden that's changed. How do you convince people that one flight changed your mind completely? Well, the answer is not like this. I thought it would be obvious, but I would like to clarify just in case it wasn't. In a key sentence in my remarks, I said the word would instead of wouldn't. 
The sentence should have been, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't or why it wouldn't be Russia. So just to repeat it, I said the word would instead of wouldn't. Oh, you, you know what? No, you know what? That, that makes sense. I actually believe Trump on this. And, and I... Hold on, sorry. Let me just check my notes. Uh, uh, sorry. What I meant to say was, get the f*** out of here, man. <laughs>until recently, he was known as Donald Trump's personal attorney, right-hand man, and a guy who you're pretty sure swallows a lot of bees. But as loyal as Cohen was to Trump, everyone always suspected that he would flip on him if it came down to it. Well, now we're down to it, and Cohen is doing somersaults. Michael Cohen claims that then-candidate Trump knew in advance about the June 2016 meeting in Trump Tower in which Russians were expected to offer his campaign dirt on Hillary Clinton. He was informed by Donald Trump Jr. about that offer. Wow. That is shocking information. Donald Trump had an actual in-person conversation with one of his sons. <laughs> also... Also, this... This Russia thing is pretty big, I guess, but, I mean... Yeah, because if they, if they can prove that Trump knew that his campaign was meeting with the Russians, it will go a long way towards proving collusion. So Trump knows that he needs backup, which is why he immediately sent out the bat signal. Unfortunately, all he got was the bat boy. But the thing about Rudy is, just when you think he's backed into a corner, he finds an even tighter corner. Cohen, you know, always goes too far. And when you're lying, there's always a trap for you. So he said there was a one-on-one -on -one meeting that Donald Jr. came in and told him about the meeting was about to take place. Well, there are two witnesses who say it didn't happen. The president and, and his son. All right. All right. All right. All right, fine. You got me with your very first rebuttal, and that has completely destroyed my argument. All right, all right. I see how any thinking person could parry that attack I made. All right, I see it. Because come on, man. I mean, props. Props to Giuliani for trying. But your reasoning can't be that the crime didn't happen because the people accused of the crime say it didn't happen. That's not what a witness is. That's not how it works. You can't be like, well, Your Honor, I witnessed myself not robbing the bank. So, <laughs> case closed. Let's go spend this money. Oomps, oomps. Trump's former lawyer and fixer, Michael Cohen, dropping a bombshell in federal court, pleading guilty to lying to Congress about how much the president knew about a potential Trump Tower project in Russia during the campaign, out of loyalty to President Trump. While Cohen told Congress last fall that the Moscow project ended in January 2016, he now admits discussions about the project lasted as late as approximately June 2016 when Trump was the presumptive Republican presidential nominee. That's right. Former Trump lawyer and human EO, Michael Cohen, <laughs> is admitting that he lied to Congress about Trump's real estate dealings with Russia. And these aren't like your typical Trump real estate lies, like, of course we installed smoke detectors. No, this lie is way more important because it puts Trump's contact with Russia much closer to him being president, right? In January 2016, Trump was just one of 17 possible morons who could become the GOP nominee. <laughs> but by June, he was the only moron who could become the nominee. Why deal with Russia at all while you're running for president of the United States? Why not just avoid the conflict altogether? Well, turn to page bullshit to find out. I was running my business while I was campaigning. There was a good chance that I wouldn't have won, in which case I would have gone back into the business, and why should I lose lots of opportunities? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, whoa. Wait, did you hear what he just said? Wait, he said the reason that he didn't stop his business dealings is because he also thought he would lose. <laughs> he just said that. He said there was a good chance that, good chance that I wouldn't have won. Well, that, yeah, I agree with him now. <laughs> No, because before I was, I was like, yeah, I'm against it, but in Trump's defense, I understand why he did it. Like, I would have told him to do the same thing. If in 2016, Trump came up to me and he's like, Trevor, do you think I should shut down my business in case I become president? I'd be like, Donald, there's no danger of that happening, my friend. <laughs> Another 
shocking report in the New York Times. And the paper claimed the FBI opened a counterintelligence investigation into whether the president was acting on behalf of the Russians when he fired FBI Director James Comey. Last night on Fox News, the president asked point blank whether he worked on behalf of Russia. Are you now or have you ever worked for Russia, Mr. President? I think it's the most <laughs> insulting thing I've ever been asked. How is that the most insulting question he's ever been asked? I mean, people have been asking him if he wants to bang his daughter, but that is more insulting? Yeah, the other question was way more reasonable. I mean, we've all seen her, right? We've all seen her. But yes, the New York Times reported that the FBI investigated Donald Trump because they thought he might be a secret Russian spy, which, I'm sorry, is just crazy. And not because he wouldn't do it, but because Donald Trump would be the world's worst spy. <laughs> no one would hire him, right? He, he can't be a spy. He doesn't even have an inside voice. <laughs> He'd be out there like, thank you for meeting me under this bridge <laughs> to exchange these top secret documents. <laughs> I don't think Trump is a Russian spy, all right? But I won't lie, it doesn't help his case when he's doing stuff like this. A bombshell report in the Washington Post claiming President Trump went to, quote, extraordinary lengths to conceal details of his conversations with Russian President Vladimir Putin. The Post reporting that at that private meeting in Hamburg back in 2017, the president confiscated his own interpreter's notes, shutting out members of the administration. Now, you gotta admit, that's real shady, right? Because now everyone wants to know, what did he say to Putin that was so bad he couldn't let anyone else see it? Could have been collusion. Could have been something worse. You know, like maybe Trump said, I love you. <laughs> and then Putin replied, thank you. <laughs> In which case, I'm with Trump. You can never let that get out. <laughs> collusion. It's the big question about the Trump campaign and Russia. But one place where there's definitely no collusion is between Rudy Giuliani's brain and his mouth. <laughs> In a new interview, the president's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, says he cannot say if Trump campaign officials colluded with Russia during the 2016 campaign. False reporting is saying that there has been no suggestion of any kind of collusion between the campaign and any Russians. Today. Well, you just misstated my position. I never said there was no collusion between the campaign or between people in the campaign. Yes, you I have, have no idea if I have not. I said the you... president of the United States. Wait. Wait. Hold on, hold on. Did Giuliani just admit that there was collusion? Yes! I, I think he did, and look at their faces. Like, <laughs> neither of them can believe what just happened. <laughs> like, like, Cuomo looks like a valedictorian caveman, and Giuliani looks like if Gollum realized he just left his wallet in an Uber. He's just like, <laughs> my precious. Breaking news tonight, longtime Trump ally and advisor Roger Stone indicted by special counsel Robert Mueller's grand jury and arrested in an early morning raid on his Florida home. FBI agents in bulletproof vests descending on his home, guns drawn. Stone was indicted on five counts of false statements, one count of obstruction, and one count of witness tampering. That's right. Special counsel Robert Mueller has now charged a sixth associate of Donald Trump. This time it was Roger Stone, personal advisor to the president and what Mike Pence would look like after one drink. <laughs> now, usually, usually, when someone in President Trump's circle comes under investigation, Trump downplays his connection to them. You know, it's what he does. You know, it's like how Trump said that Paul Manafort was barely on the campaign, or that George Papadopoulos was a coffee boy, or Jared Kushner was just his <laughs> blocker. But. <laughs> Trump might have a harder time dismissing Roger Stone. And not just because Stone dresses like he crashes British weddings, but also because a big question in this investigation is whether the Trump campaign coordinated with WikiLeaks to release Hillary's hacked emails, right? And in his indictment, Mueller says that Roger Stone was directed to contact WikiLeaks by someone in the Trump campaign. Now, was that someone Trump himself? We don't know. But if it wasn't Trump, you would expect his people to just come out and say so. But instead, they're avoiding the question like it's a friend's poetry reading. 
the charges brought against Mr. Stone have nothing to so, do with so, the president. Okay. That's what I'm clear on, and that's what I can tell you about it today. You, you keep telling me you're clear on that, but then you will not answer whether it was the president who directed a senior Trump campaign official to contact Roger Stone. And you may not know. You may not know. All I'm saying I, is I you can't... I actually have answered the question several times. You just don't like my answer. No, no, no. no. You, uh, you those haven't two told, things did, aren't the same. Well, did the president know or not? Did, was it the president who made that direction or not? Uh, once again, I'm, I, I haven't read this document. Okay. I'm not an attorney. I'm not going to be able to get into the weeds on those specifics. Okay. That's right. I'm not an attorney. I can't tell you what the truth is. I'm not qualified. <laughs> like, is it just me or does Sarah Huckabee Sanders say all Trump people had nothing to do with Trump whenever shit hits the fan? I feel like this whole thing is going to end with her coming out like, uh, Donald Trump had nothing to do with the Trump presidency. He was totally out of the loop, practically made zero decisions at all.